Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here on my channel. Today I'm going to be giving you a really, really useful workflow tip to be able to help your projects be less laggy as you're working on them. Now this will be especially helpful if you're working with, say, a lot of layers, for example. As you know, the more things you add to this, the more CPU your project will use, and eventually it can get to a point where it's really, really difficult to even navigate and add stuff to just because you're constantly getting like weird playback stutters, things like that. This should help you to resolve this in part, and it's something you could apply to every single project and hopefully have this issue a little bit less. Now, I have also in the past uploaded an in-depth CPU guide for FL Studio, which goes over a lot of settings to change and just in general very helpful tips to help prevent this issue a bit more. I would recommend you go check this out because that'll help you even more. But quickly, I do want to show you again this new technique that I've been using. Not really new per se, but just kind of like sometimes I don't do this and then I have the issue and I just end up wishing that I did. And this is all about bus processing. So I've put together this quick loop here just to kind of demonstrate this. It's very, very short. Really only this is what it is and then it just repeats. But it sounds like this right now. That's it. So we've done a bit of processing as well. We're not really having the CPU issue on this project because there's not really a lot going on at all. But I do want to demonstrate. This is broken up into three layers. There's this one. There's also this weird like ARP thing. And in the back. There's this lead line. And then there's some hats as well, but that's not really part of it. That's just something separate. So mainly we're focusing on these three. Now you see on each of them, I do have some effects. And that is because I'm processing them quite a bit differently. The first one has disperser and a compressor on it. The second one has an EQ and some reverb. And the third one has an EQ on it as well. Now my plan here was I wanted to make this very far in the back. Some of the sounds are actually getting additional effects through Serum itself. Like for example, this one number three here. I'm doing some effects here as well. But I wanted to put this in the back with additional reverb. And initially, kind of the way that would work if you're producing a track You'd go on to whatever element you want to add reverb to, like say it was this one. We'd go ahead and select that. And we'd go and do this. Now over time, as you stack effects like this, you're going to create a CPU problem because it's going to be very difficult to kind of recall all of those instances at the same time, especially if you're using bigger plugins. Like for example, on these hats, I do have an instance of Soothe, which is a very CPU intensive plugin. So basically the tip that I'm trying to explain here to a degree is you could minimize the amount of plugins you're doing for an effects chain, especially if it's something that's all grouped together, by bussing them onto a new channel and then doing it on that one so it applies to all of them. So what I mean by that is, instead of adding reverb to all three of these, what I could do instead is select any mixer channel, we'll just throw them all over here onto, I think that's 10. So move these onto 10. And what I could do is I go to 10, and here's where I could add that reverb plugin, for example. Now, rather than adding it three different times, you know, we're using a third of the amount, which is incredibly useful because now it only has to load this one reverb plugin and it affects them all. Now, there are situations where this is not helpful, and I'll explain that here. I know our hats are not part of this effect chain, but let's pretend for a second that that was an additional like melodic layer. You know how I had to add soothe to this? Well, what if the other sounds don't want Soothe? Like, I'm using that specifically to eliminate a problem, but if I were to add this to the bus, obviously all the other sounds that don't need it would be getting it. And that's okay. That means you could just go ahead and use it on that individual one. This is not a use one or the other type of situation. Rather, this is you could bus all of the ones that it's all going to want together, and then go ahead and add separately the ones that it won't. So, say for example, you have a lot of pads, you don't need to put an EQ on each of those to remove all of the low end that's unnecessary. You could instead just bust them together and do it once, unless one of those specific sounds needs a more specific EQ. Like say one has some harsh resonant frequencies in the mids or something. You could go ahead and do it just that one time, but try to save the CPU where you can. If you're just doing something like a simple low cut, you could just do that once on a mixer track rather than multiple times throughout all of your sacks. And this will save you a ton of CPU over time. Like I say, with things like EQs, reverbs, things like that, you can kind of get away with using a lot of them. But if this gets into more in-depth processing, like as I say, Soothe, this will save you. And you will have a lot more CPU room to work with, and it'll make your projects as a whole a lot less laggy. But as I did say, I do have an in-depth CPU guide on other settings to change. I would recommend you go check that out, because that video has a ton of other things that should help you. 
but let me know in the comments if this has helped you out as well. Don't forget to drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to stay up to date with future content. That is going to wrap us up here though, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.